Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Freight utility Transnet announced the award of a 50 billion rand locomotives contract to four global companies this week. Terence Creamer attended the signing ceremony and joins me to discuss the significance of the contracts. Hi Terence. Hi. This contract has been around for a while. However, can you please discuss what it actually entails? Yeah, it goes back to April 2012, and uh, that was when the board and the shareholder minister proved that as part of the 300 billion market demand strategy, there's going to be a major modernization and expansion of the general freight business fleet. Now, the general freight business deals with all those cargoes that don't go down the coal line and the iron ore lines. So it's really the, the automotive cargo, the domestic coal, the other metals, and some of the other freight uh, um, cargo that goes in containers. Uh, so that business has really got a very old fleet of about 33 years old is the average age. And the idea is to re recapitalize the fleet uh, through this very, very large uh, acquisition of locomotives, 1,064 in total. 599 of those will be electric and 465 will be diesel locomotives. So it's a big acquisition and it's been divided by f uh, into four packages for four different companies. So 359 of those will be made by uh, China South Rail uh, and they'll be doing electric locomotives. The other uh, balance of the electric will be done by Bombardier uh, Transportation and uh, then the diesel will be done by General Electric and by China so uh, North Rail will do the other um, portion of the of the diesel locomotives, and uh, and basically the the total contract value, the base contract value is um, about 40 billion rand. But the 50 billion rand includes there's going to be hedge hedging costs and escalation costs that are built into this contract. So they've given this global figure of 50 billion rand, which is the single largest locomotive uh, procurement ever undertaken by Transnet. And why has this contract been pursued? Well, it's mostly to take the volumes of, uh, of the general freight business. Already we've got a lot of investment going into and modernization on the coal line and the iron ore line. And those, those investments continue on a separate track. But to take the general freight business uh, up in its volumes. Um, so the, the, what Transnet wants to move by 2019 is uh, 305 million tons a year moment it's around 208. So this, this modernization expansion of the general freight uh, fleet is really about raising the volumes uh, of, the, um, of those, uh, the, those lines outside of the export corridors and um, really trying to capture more of the uh, gross domestic product in transport or the transportation or gross domestic product. At the moment Transnet's got about 15 percent market share and by 2022, it's targeting to have between 25% and 30% market share. So this big investment's really aligned to what they think is a latent demand um, in the market, um, but it's basically being transported by road at the moment. So it's part of the bigger government strategy to move transport from road to rail. And that was really the, what underpins this, this big, large acquisition program. And were there any surprises with the way that Transnet dealt with the award? I think there was, I suppose the, the only surprise that maybe the Chinese companies won so much uh, of the uh, of the contract. So two Chinese companies, one from the diesel end and one from the electric uh, side, took the lion's share really of this big uh, tender. But I think that uh, if you look back a few months or a few years, Transnet did have a, another smaller 95 locomotive tender, electric locomotive tender, which went to China South Rail. Now there was a lot of skepticism about whether China South Rail could really deliver within the time frame stipulated. And actually, uh, towards the end of last year, they you know, showcased the first locomotive that had been built. It's really being tested north of Pretoria at Kudus Port. And uh, this locomotive was designed, engineered, manufactured, and got ready for a production cycle in, in, in less than 12 months, which is considered really quite a rapid uh, turnaround. And I think Transnet was quite impressed by that development. So they know, obviously, they know the, the Western suppliers, that's their, their current fleet, 
is dominated by that. They also know GE very well, who's been helping with a lot of the modernization already. But I, uh, but I think, it, so it was a bit of a surprise at how much the Chinese got, but I think that they had sort of, uh, sort of done evaluations and had a, a, a confidence boost from what China South Rail was able to deliver with the 95 electric locomotives. The localization aspect has been emphasized. Could you talk us through this and what it means for industry? Yeah, I think that this, this tender was structured differently. So usually a public tender of this nature is it's 80-20 split. So 80% um, percent is, or 80 percent of the weighting is given to price and 20 is given to, uh, to the socioeconomic, the black economic empowerment, the economic spin-offs. But there was a, a delegation from Transnet or an appeal from Transnet to Treasury to try and have a, a different type of split where you have 40% 40, uh, 40 non-related to price. So 60% is still price, 20% relates to some of the empowerment aspects. And there was an aspect of localization was heavily um, you know, emphasized in the tender documents. And you can see the commitments that have been made from all four bidders that um, some of them, like Bombardier, saying every single unit will be produced in South Africa from the get-go. But of the 1,064 uh, uh, vehicles that are going to be um, produced over the next few years, only about 70 of those are going to be produced outside of the country. So the rest, it's already a, a large amount, it's nearly 1,000 locomotives are going to be produced both in, in Kudusport, that's at Transnet Engineering's facilities there, and the balance will be produced at Durban, also Transnet Engineering. So the potential for local content is quite high. Transnet Engineering is going to invest 300 million rand to create the platforms necessary to roll out the, the production of these locomotives. And you know, we already know General Electric is quite embedded in um, Kudusport. Uh, similarly, China South Rail has been doing a lot of their work north of, uh, north of Pretoria. So I imagine that China North Rail and Bombardier will be located more in the Durban facilities. But Bombardier does have their own facilities already in South Africa because, as we know, they, they did participate in the Gaut train project. So they do have workshops and uh, a local capacity that they may want to draw on. So it, it's a bit unclear at the moment, but we do know that Transnet Engineering is going to invest this 300 billion because, million because they're wanting to create the basis for a, a large localization effort. So not only for uh, Transnet's own needs and immediate needs on these uh, over 1,000 locomotives, but ultimately we want to create the platform for what they're saying as an African uh, original equipment manufacturer, producing a locomotive ready for uh, supply primarily into the growing African rail market. Now that's a big audacious goal and one that has been set out clearly as part of this tender. So there's a lot of technology transfer, there's a lot of learnings that um, Transnet is wanting to gain from these four global supplying. They're calling it a once in a life opportunity because you're seeing four uh, top rail supplies in the country all at one time. And they're hoping to learn lessons from that. And you must remember Prasa is also in the process of doing a major um, uh, recapitalization that's involving the Alstom group. So we've actually got five major OEMs now located in the rail sector in South Africa and Transnet Engineering involved with at least four, maybe even in, in the price of work as well. So they're going to have good visibility of, how, of best practice. And the idea is to really embed those be best practices that Transnet Engineering becomes an OEM in its own right that will compete ironically with those, these suppliers ultimately in the African market and maybe also outside of Africa. So we're wanting to look at building a, 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 local, a locomotive localize, uh, localization program around this. And uh, Transnet has said there's going to be private participation uh, into, these, into these four platforms, but also wanting to build a local industry around Kudusport and Durban that can supply components into that. Now, it's, as I said, an ambitious goal. It has the potential to change manufacturing, <coughs> create new businesses, <coughs> build a black uh, industrialist class. But, uh, you know, as we've seen with other offset projects in the past, that, uh, you know, uh, the devil is in the detail and it doesn't always work out as, uh, as first envisaged, uh, the arms procurement program being the most notable. The difference here, and I think with the arms procurement program as well, is that where, the, where it was defense-related and companies were defense-oriented, 
those offsets were generally uh, fairly successful, not uh, overwhelmingly. And here again, uh, you know, it's, it's really locomotive oriented, so it's going to be sticking to the knitting, and hopefully the offset program this time will pay dividends. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.